All right, hope everybody had a good weekend and uh, got to relax a little bit. Uh, I know I know we all did. Got good to get a little extra sleep, watch a little bit of football, um, get uh, energized for the week against a good opponent. So uh, just a couple roster updates for you. Uh, Jack Doyle's still in concussion protocol, so we'll continue to monitor that. Obviously, Kenny, we're continuing to monitor the status on his ribs. Um, you know, Matt Adams will be activated off the COVID uh, reserve list, and uh, Kamoko will be uh, activated off the PUP, and, and he'll be activated this week. So open it up for questions. Zach Kiefer. Frank, we ask players this all the time, but and I'm curious, as a head coach, what have you learned from Matt Eberplus? You know, what do you learn as the coach um, from the other coaches, but specifically Matt Eberflus this year? You know, I think, I think uh, Flus has a great blend of, you know, discipline. You know, like everybody knows that Flus is, you know, really strong conviction, strong discipline. And, but he really, really is adaptable and he's really a learner. He's really got a humble spirit to him. You know, he comes off really strong because he is. But he also has a real humble spirit, and uh, and you know, and a willingness and eagerness to to learn. And so, you know, just watching him, uh, you know, lead the defensive staff and lead the defensive unit in the way that he has, it and make you know, sticking to his core convictions, and then making small, small little changes that benefit players and put them in the best position, and the way he's kind of nuance certain fronts and coverages um, that we're playing. I just think he's done an outstanding job. Joel Erickson. Uh, Frank, uh, what, have, what have you seen out of Desmond Padman and, and why hasn't he been up yet? Yeah, he looks good. He continues to, you know, work really hard at practice. We're really excited that we, you know, we've had, we have a really strong core of young receivers and, you know, we see them fitting into certain roles. And so as there have been opportunities, you know, earlier in the year for guys to step up into certain roles that we needed, you know, we made the moves that we thought were best at the time. Um, but we will very, uh, feel very good about Des and his development um, and what he's doing right now. Mike Chappell. Frank with Kamoko, uh, I assume he'll be on somewhat of a pitch count early on. But I guess what have you seen from him in practice and a player on a pitch count at that position where maybe it's specialized, situational, can he contribute pretty much right away? I think so. I mean, you know, if, if he gets activated, for, you know, if he's up for the game. But what we've seen out of practice is, you know, same guy. I mean, you know, same guy with the speed and Ben coming off the edge, you know, a disruptive player, um, you know, with a lot of a lot of explosiveness. So natural knack to get off on the ball, get off on the snap count. So yeah, and you're right, Chap. I mean, it, it would be natural to when and if he's up, just like there is in practice, you know, he's on a bit of a pitch count in practice, It'd be the same thing in the game. Jim Isle. Hey Frank, I'm kind of doubling back to something I asked last week, which is just about the quarterback sneaks. I know you said you, you would call them for Phillip Rivers, but I just hadn't yet this year. I, I just didn't know. Is it something he prefers not to do? Or or again, I know you've talked about sneaks too. There are some quarterbacks who like them, some who don't. So just curious about that. Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of a lot of things, Jim. I mean, um, you know, just, yeah, without getting, you know, you don't like to give away too many deep, dark secrets about your deep philosophies about certain things, right? So I'm... Um, intentionally being vague okay J just so i don't seem to be being rude um but yeah there's a lot there's several different factors that go into it and uh it's always a valid question because the it's always a valid question because the success rate of quarterback sneaks historically is very high in short yardage situations so um so it's always something that we're talking about and looking about but there's multiple factors that go into it i know this philip you know, Philip will do whatever we need him to do for the team, but it's a question about you know what is what is best and what is right. Kevin Bowen, Frank, I, I'd say one of the most constants in your tenure has been the run defense. What 
I guess, or Matt's maybe core beliefs or what, why do you think that's been so consistent no matter the personnel? I think the scheme, you know, I think the scheme, um, all the defensive line movement that we have is very, uh, you know, it's very disruptive in the run game. And I just know from going against it in practice all the time in training camp and in OTAs, um, but obviously scheme is, so this, that scheme is part of it. Obviously it's players in that, you know, as we've said here, you know, we want to build from the inside out. So we feel like we got some pretty good players up there, even right from the very start, we've got good play from the defensive line and linebackers in that front seven. So I think it's a combination of those two things. Wish TV. Coach, uh, this may be a dumb question here, but as we all watched the game last night with Green Bay, what were some things that you saw as they were kind of playing down to Jacksonville that stood out to you that you didn't already know? Um, yeah, it was it was a it was a good game. I mean, I, you know, I was actually doing a little bit of work while the game was on, to be honest with you, sitting there with an iPad and kind of watching one one aspect from a, a fan's point of view, watching on television while at the same time having, you know, an iPad open and really looking at it from from a, a game planning standpoint and stuff like that. So, uh, and then I was, you know, bouncing around between a couple games, you know, just for entertainment purposes as well. So, yeah, I mean, Rogers is, he's unbelievable. And, uh, you know, he's, I thought Jacksonville really played lights out and they, they really played hard. I thought that's what stuck out to me is how hard Jacksonville played. So I don't, I really felt like it was Jacksonville playing a great game and doing some good things, um, you know, on the other side of the ball. And we just know that Green Bay is one of the top teams in this league, has been for the last couple of years, um, you know, and a very dangerous team. And I just think the world of Rodgers, I mean, I just think he's a unique player. Two more, Mike Wells. Hey Frank, is there a point in the season where you actually really, really pay attention to the standings? And I ask that because you look at the AFC, it's pretty loaded. I mean, there's nine teams with mm -hmm. at least a six and three record. So as a coach, when you're look jockeying for, you know, whether it's first place in the division or a playoff spot, is there a point in the season when you look at that? Yeah, I mean, it, it'd be disingenuous to say that, you're, you know, that you don't look at the standings and see how crowded it is up there in the AFC and see what's going on. I just can't allow that, and we just can't allow that to dictate to us or get you in a certain kind of mindset. Um, I don't think there's any productivity to play in that game as far as looking at the schedule, who plays who, trying to project out what's, that's all a waste of emotional energy. It's all a waste as far as internally. I mean, now it's great if you're a fan, if it's great if you're in the media. I mean, if that's what I would, I'd be spending all my time doing that. If I was in your position, that's the fun part of it, right? I mean, that's, that's a blast. I can just tell you from a coaching and a playing perspective, it has zero productivity to it. All that matters is the Green Bay Packers and we got to win the next game. All right, last one, Mike Chappell. Frank, you guys have gotten so, you know, knock on wood, you've gotten so much production from special teams. How much do you and Bubba have to sell players? I'm not sure that Speed and Glasgow have played on defense yet, but they're core players. How much do you have to sell players that, hey, this is important and it may not be a, you know, quote, starring role, but it's pretty darn important. Yeah, no, you know, even going back to the offseason, well, first of all, you know, Bubba does a phenomenal job. I, he just, I, you know, I can't imagine a better special teams coach. He personally has so much juice about practicing and playing. It's it's infectious, and, and, and he could still go out there and do it. And so when he gets in a special teams meeting, I really don't think he has to sell anything. I, I think he is the product, and, and I think – the guys see that and believe that and, and believe in Bubba and Frankie and the schemes and the way that we're teaching things. So um, really it's, it's almost, I don't want to say the other way, but I, we've had players in recent weeks. We had a player, you know, a vet player a couple of weeks ago, go to Bubba and say, Hey, I, I want to play on this unit, you know, please put me on this unit. So that's really a testament to number one, our players, um, 
wanting to do anything they can do to help the team win and knowing how important it is. We watch so much, when we watch film as a team together and we watch all the situational tapes, obviously a lot of that is special teams stuff. So as a team, we get, uh, we get a, a very strong sense of how important these plays are and how heavily they're weighted. So I appreciate the fact that our players are wanting to play on those units and Bubba does a great job of leading them. Well, one quick follow-up on that. You guys know for the most part who your defensive players are and your, and your mm -hmm. offensive. He may not know until final cut day whether they're speeding glass. So it's really more incumbent on him to be able to adjust, I assume. You know, he definitely has to be able to adjust. But if you, if you guys know Bubba, which I know you do, this is what I love about Bubba. Bubba is extremely opinionated. And, you know, and he is not bashful. And he is always going to be in Chris's office um, letting his opinion be known about uh, and my office about, hey, who we need. And each week, like, uh, you know, like we'll meet today at five o'clock and like we do every week and have a preliminary meeting about projected inactives for the week. And, and there's some healthy discussions in there, you know, about who's going to be active, who's not going to be active. And they're always projected on Monday. It's projected because you don't know how the week's going to always play out. But um, he does such a good job. And, uh, and when he has to adapt, he, he adapts very well. But I also appreciate his conviction about how important his players are to this team.